Well, this is part two. We were in the middle of, of talking about body ministry and how this is blog topic nine of, of uh, body ministry, how church clergy, a modern day church for sure, has been really blind to how the body is supposed to function together. There's a lot here about it. So it says, Paul says, take turns with tongues and interpretation and prophecy. That's what he says. Take turns. Take turns. Because God isn't about confusion, but peace. Does that mean uh, shut up or stop the praxis function of these? Paul talks about praxis functions we saw in previous videos. The praxis functioning of these grace gifts? No. That's what grace gifts do. They're just functions. They differ in the varieties of way they function. Uh, not in quantity, but in the way they function. Uh, as many churches have overreacted, right? That's what they've done. They, they shut it up and they stopped it. That's how they interpret this, uh, this doing things in order, right? Tr -tr -tr. No, Paul advises. He says, quote, Let two or three prophets speak, and coupled I strongly urge the others ongoingly discriminate it, and that's this word uh, diacrino that we talked about in a previous blog. It's this, this careful judging through the realizing channel of thoroughly to investigate or thoroughly or discriminate thoroughly. So it's this ongoing thorough discrimination, but if to another person sitting there, there is a revealing, and this is revelation, right, via prophecy, that's what prophecy is, a revelation, it says, let the first prophet be silent, for you can all prophesy one by one in order that all, here's the purpose, may ongoingly learn and coupled all be ongoingly encouraged alongside and that is a really powerful word this is parakaleo and this is a term often used of the holy spirit this alongside uh encouragement counseling right it's a counselor so you're going to be be ongoingly parakaleo uh, uh alongside encouraged Prophet, yeah, guess what? <laughs> the Holy Spirit's doing this prophesying. And it says, so we can all may learn together. Prophetic interaction within the body of Christ is what it's all about, Paul is saying. These aren't just speakers on stages with audiences watching. <laughs> That's a lot of churches have treated them, if they even, right? If they even do, if they even allow they are the body of Christ is supposed to interact with them. We're supposed to interact with them. That's what it says. We're supposed to interact with them. Ongoingly, thoroughly discriminate. And that word and the others, it's uh, in the house church of like kind. These, this is means of like kind. Uh, thus, spirit. Spiritual. They have to be spiritual. They can't be, right? They can't be uh, people outside, ignorant of the gifts or uninformed. That's ignorant of the gifts. Or they're outsiders. They're unbelievers. How are they going to be able to interact with them, right? They have to be spiritual Christians, in the house church, they're the ones that can interact, and they're the ones that can thoroughly discriminate. With it, some people say weigh in, weigh in together, but it means to thoroughly interact, discriminate, um, 
investigate, and this is a powerful term, uh, so how are you going to be able to do that? You better have the spirit. <laughs> Paul talks about the spirit, spirit kind of people, spirit kind of things can interpret or, or uh, compare, contrast, interpret uh, spirit kind of things. But natural man has no place in this judgment. No place in this kind of judgment, this discretion, um, this, this looking into the things of God. Paul sums it in 1 Corinthians 14, 39 through 40. I strongly urge you to ongoingly, zealously burn or covet to prophesy. And coupled to this, I strongly urge you to ongoingly, absolutely not in possibility, to forbid or hinder ongoingly speaking with tongues. Wow, the Greek is rich, isn't it? But I strongly urge you, it's all these imperatives, that all things should be ongoingly done with good form. Now that means decorously becoming, respectful, respectably, honorably. Uh, sounds like love, doesn't it? <laughs> right? Respectably, honorably, uh, decorously becoming. Right? Just as unconditional love calls for. So that's, that's really why he says everything's pursue love, pursue love, pursue. 1 Corinthians 13 chapter is all about love. So it's all doing this simultaneously. Love, not this and this, but together. Love with this. So he says, uh, let... Let all things should be ongoingly done, he said, for the building up of the church. Here he says, with good, good form. That means decorously becoming, respectable, honorable, which is really unconditional love, right? So, just using different words to describe the same kind of actions. And coupled, all right, he couples to this, down from, that's the word kata. This is where it comes down from, or it's according to or in the manner of. How are we going to do this type thing? He says, from according to order, right? Order and arrangement. Context is always defined, good form, and order as without confusion, but one person after another. See, Paul already described that. This is the conclusion, right? So that all can benefit. So it's one person after another. That's the order, in order, in arrangement. So the Greek word there in 1 Corinthians 14.40, you can just type that in, 1 Corinthians 14.40 in Bible Hub, and it says it's the word taxis, like taxis. <laughs> it looks just like the word taxis. And we know that taxis in Greek means it says right here to arrange or order properly an arrangement, a brand of ordering, placing one member after another, right? One member after another in either approval or rank. It doesn't have to be in rank. It could be in all kinds of difference. It generally means arranged in order. That's all it means. The term suggests a detailed ordering rather than simply a general disposition, a detailed ordering. So from or according to, this is how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a detailed, a specified order, right? A specified order. So you're saying, hey, you can go, and now you can go, and now you can go, and this is how we arrange it. That's how we do it, right? That's how we're going to order the troops, for so to speak. We're going to do it according to, well, in, this, in troops is according to rank, a specified order uh, for... So your specified, or I should say, arranging the 
It's just a specified order of arrangement. That's all it is. It's, you're just, hey, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, right? And that's how we're going to do this good form. It's linked together, ongoingly done with good form. And it's this honorable, uh, respectful, respected, respectful form. So this is how we show respect. This is for one another. This is how we show unconditional love for one another. We do it by taking turns in a specified an order of arrangement. Makes sense to me. I mean, this is just practical practicality, right? Just simple, basic, uh, you know, Robert's rules of orders. Hey, raise your hand before you speak, you know. Don't go, I mean, just don't go plodding along, right? This is uh, is basically like a Robert's uh, rules of order, but it's informal. That's what it is. You know, raise your hands. <laughs> You know, basic politeness. But you know, a lot of people aren't uh, polite by nature. They haven't learned these things. They didn't have a family that taught them these things. And so when they get into a group situation, you see people just you know, talking over the top of each other, just, they don't get anybody's attention, they just start talking right over the top of other people. Oh, but, 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 but. you know, it's like they want to, want everybody to hear their voice. I kind of, you know, we get enthusiastic too. We get so upset about something or so excited about something that we just start blurting out, you know, and instead of listening to the other people. Paul's saying, this is not love. Let's do this decently in order. This decency is uh, basic manners and politeness, right, of love. And this is just basic, genuine love for others, right? You're, you're just showing courtesy, right? Manners, uh, politeness, and courtesy. Right? That's all we're doing. This is basic practicality. It's kind of a, an informal Robert's Rules of Order. You know, that's very formal. You know, you pretty much have to memorize that book if you're going to do meetings by that book. You know, very few people even know what I'm talking about. But they used to do that really strict Robert's Rules of Order. Uh, it's like how meetings are conducted. So people don't even know what it is anymore. <laughs> they just, it's a, it's a free-for-all most of the time. So um, it's not very loving. I've been in a lot of brainstorming sessions in, in corporate worlds. And uh, you have to be careful, especially if there's a lot of leadership there. You don't want to uh, step on their toes. You know, there's an interaction. There's kind of a, a, some unsaid rules there that you kind of learn if you don't want to get fired. So, you know, it's sort of a respect like that, but uh, really this is the body of Christ family that should be interacting with each other in a loving way. And that's why Paul says, hey man, let two or three of you guys speak one after another, and then you guys all weigh in together and just keep doing this until everybody has a chance to interact. Because he says, each of you bring, each of you bring. So if you're all bringing something, you got to give a chance for everybody to have that input. And you don't see that usually in very many groups. I've been in a lot of groups. And usually somebody dominates. You know, uh, somebody just wants to be the leader. They just take over. And they do all, a lot of the teaching, talking, and everything. And everybody else just goes, uh -huh, uh -huh, and they're bored out of their gore. 
you know, drool coming out of the side of their mouth, you know, falling asleep. And this is what a lot of church services are, you know. But even in home groups, I've seen this. Um, somebody wants to just has all the right information, right? wants to share it with everybody. And uh, this waiting for other people to speak, encouraging other people to speak um, and to share, right? That's, that's, you don't see a lot of that. But that's what we're called to do, you know. And then we're all supposed to weigh in. It's not like one person teaching and then everybody just sits there and go, Can't, when's lunch? Oh boy, taking notes or whatever. Um, it's not supposed to be like that. It's not supposed to be like the world does it many ways. The world does it like that. It's not supposed to be a hierarchy. Nobody over each other. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Nobody should think more highly of himself than the rest. That's how they ought to be thinking. Everybody has a different function, Paul says. We all should be interacting. Uh, so I don't know how we got all... It's all about borrowing from the world and uh, sometimes borrowing from other religions and even the Old Testament religion. And that's called the Great Wall. Go look at the Great Wall. So look forward to your comments here. Um, really, body ministry is supposed to be like the family of God around the dinner table. Uh, loving family of God. Not, you know, like we did, just <laughs> try to get it down before the next person. You know, that's what, what, what it was like at my house. And we don't like to talk to each other at all. You know, we did not have a functional family. We had a dysfunctional family. So um, generally there was too much yelling and screaming and, uh, you know, hard feelings and this kind of stuff. Well, that's not supposed to be the, the, the church of God, the family of God. Uh, we're all supposed to be brothers and sisters in the Lord. And we should be giving a preference to each other. It says outdoing honor, giving outdoing honor for each other. I, saw, I think we saw that in the first blog uh, part of this. It says, when you come to dig together, try to outdo your honor to one another. I, I remember seeing that, something about honor. Anyway, that's what it's about. We have a long ways to go, don't we? <laughs> What's your experience? I'd be interested hearing uh, in your church services, in your home group meetings. Um, really, the home group meetings is all they ever had for like, 300 years and it is what almost everybody else in the world has if there's any kind of persecution going on and, and actually those churches are thriving and are much more spirit-led and much more like the new testament model than anything we have here in america you know missionaries are coming from other countries because we are a fallen away church we are a worldly church we have become conform to the image of this world Romans chapter 12 verse 2 we are just like the world in many of its in many cases and we look just like it we sound like it um, we operate just like it we have meetings just like it and uh, but this none of this was given to us it was what we ended up with because we borrowed from the world right the world uh, got into us big time so Maybe we should go back to the beginning and look at, that's what we're doing in these uh, blogs. So what, do you, what did you guys experience? You know, put that down in the blog. I, really, this would really help us all, right? God bless you.